Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is the Calculator Mod. Today, we're going to be covering getting into calculations. For those that are unfamiliar with this mod, like myself before I actually began this tutorial, uh, it's not really as difficult as one might think, and it can get a little bit powerful, uh, even rather early on, though not too much so, and it does have a lot to offer. Uh, but today we're just going to be covering the first tier, which is going to be your calculator. Now, in order to get into this mod, you will have to have done a little bit of mining at least, uh, not too much though, and then as you progress, uh, it will get much more uh, advanced. But for now, your first item that you're going to want to craft is an information ca calculator or an info calculator. Uh, which the uh, the recipe is very simple, just a bunch of cobblestone, uh, a couple buttons, and a piece of redstone with a calculator screen. Which you think, a calculator screen? That's difficult to make. No, it's not. It's just cobblestone with redstone. So you have to have at least a couple pieces of redstone. And this is basically, uh, it, it's, a, it's a manual. It, it's a searchable manual. You've got all the information you want. You've got the different tabs of things you can look into. You can click on these things, it tells you all about them, you can go through the different things, it, it, it's really useful. It's going to tell you just about everything you're going to need to know, but it, it's not 100% accurate. So use it as a guideline, but not as, a, a, you know, like factual 100%. And it all depends on the version that you're playing as well. It, it may or may not have certain things that uh, I'm going to show you in here today, depending on the uh, Minecraft version you have. But this should still get you the basic idea and show you what you need to do in order to get this mod going. So second thing you have here is it has multiple uses, and that is a crafting calculator, uh, as you see here. Now, the recipe is also very simple. It's almost identical as the other one, except you've got a crafting table in the center will get you a crafting calculator. Now, what does this do? It basically, that's, that's the wrong one. A crafting calculator is a portable crafting grid. That's pretty much it. Here, let me uh, get uh, a bunch of, uh, let's just bring in some, I could make uh, doors. Uh, I can make uh, a furnace, uh, not, not a problem. And here's the best part. Uh, you know what? I now have nine extra spaces in my inventory at the same time. So you can use these as like little mobile bags if you want, or you can use them as a crafting mechanic. So it can save you some space, or it can at least craft up some items for you. Now, on top of that, what do we have here? The calculator, the basic one which it's just going to be called a regular calculator. Uh, and it's going to be a whole bunch of cobblestone uh, buttons and, of course, the, the screen as before, but a calculator assembly, which is just more buttons and cobblestone. The, uh, the calculator itself, you see here you've got two spots plus a third. It's just another way of crafting items, combining two items together to get a third special one. Now, if you go into your inventory here and you have JEI or just enough items installed, which I highly recommend for this mod. You hover over your calculator and you press the letter U. By default should bring up the uses for that calculator. Now you can, you know, use it in recipes for other things, but the first tab is going to be very important. All these different things that you can make with it. Uh, it it's really, really cool. All the things that you can create and craft and so on. And that's what I'm going to kind of show you how to do this stuff. So we're going to start off going down a little bit of a list and show you some of the progression that's involved in this mod. Uh, first and foremost, we have reinforced stone, which is cobblestone and oak wood planks. So if I take, actually, I've got some in my inventory. So let's, let's start with that. I just right click with my calculator in my hand. I take a bit of cobblestone and a bit of wood and I can make myself reinforced stone. Very, very basic recipe. And what good is reinforced stone? Well, it is blast resistant, uh, so you can use it as some kind of wall replacement instead of stones. Uh, it can be also be decorated and so on. You can also take this and turn it into other stones, you know, but uh, it, it it's really cool. But there are more uses for reinforced stone, and that is for making better stone tools. You know how you always start off with your, your typical vanilla stone tools and so on? Well, you've got all these other ones. They're the same recipes as they would be in vanilla for an axe, but it's a reinforced axe. And the difference with this is that it, I, I have the, uh, the statistics brought up here. If you look on the bottom here, it says metadata, 0 out of 131. That's the amount of damage it has taken so far, which is none out of 131 durability. So I can mine 131 blocks with this stone axe before it breaks. If I go over to the reinforced axe, which is made with one piece of wood and one cobblestone per reinforced block, 
So therefore, the recipe is slightly more expensive. It will last about twice as long at 250 durability. So it's got the same accesses, but it's going to be a lot more durable. So basically, your, your sword, your pickaxe, and your shovel are going to be slightly better in damage. Your axe and hoe are going to be pretty much pathetic, and uh, they will have a lot more durability. Now, that, that's, that's really basic stuff, but I'm going to get into, into more. There is more that you can do here. In a regular crafting grid, you can take some reinforced stone. And we can use our crafting calculator for this, because why not? And I will do this, and I can make a grenade casing. Now, a grenade casing, as you see here, gets you this. And with that, combined with TNT, you're going to need to use your, your uh, calculator, not your crafting calculator. Crafting calculators for vanilla stuff more most of the time. Your calculator is going to be used for almost everything else that you're going to be crafting in this mod in general senses. Now if I take this grenade casing and TNT, I'll make a baby grenade. They're very small, uh, they're somewhat effective. There you go, pretty good. Eventually they might actually break through. Just know that these little baby grenades can do a, a little bit of damage. They don't do a lot. They're just kind of cool, and you can throw them a really good distance. Now, moving on, what else can you do with your regular calculator? You can make a scarecrow. A scarecrow is good for a few things. One being, they just look kind of cool. I mean, look at this guy. He, he's, he's ridiculous, but he, <laughs> he's really cool. He has a secondary effect, and that is that you can use him uh, to actually uh, give a slight bone mealing effect in a three block radius around him. So you can toss him on top of a water block and therefore he can help keep your stuff growing ever so slightly faster. It's a very not noticeable rate, but it is kind of cool that you can actually do this. And you would of course have to take a pumpkin and a hay bale in your calculator and make the scarecrow. Now, what else can you make? You can make broccoli seeds. Pumpkin seeds plus regular seeds will get you broccoli seeds. What good is broccoli? You can eat it raw and it will get you a half hunger or you can cook it like you would a pork chop or something like that and it will get you nine half hungers uh, or four and a half hunger food refills on your your, your uh, saturation bar there. It, it's really good. Uh, I do recommend that you try and make some of these really quickly just because it, it's a really good resource that you can regrow. Uh, so what else can we make? We can make a rain sensor, which is a daylight sensor plus a bucket will get your rain sensor. And it's as you would expect, if it starts raining, it will actually give off a redstone signal as if a daylight sensor or a switched to nighttime sensor would. Uh, so that, that's pretty much it on those ones. Now, there is a little bit here with these. If you take a couple of reinforced stone bricks, which uh, as I was showing you before uh, in my calculator, taking a couple of these together, a couple of the reinforced stones will make you a reinforced stone brick which then you, it's just a different texture really. Uh, but if you take a couple of those again in here, you can then make stable stone, but you can use it to make other stuff. So you see here, stable stone, you can take a couple glass and make stable glass, uh, which I'm gonna uh, take a piece of that out, piece of this out. And what can you do with these? You can make these other ones like green stable stone. You can make a lot of, of, of them. These are all part of Sonar Core, which is also a requirement for this mod to be installed. They're basically reinforced stones that have some uh, color options for them. Now let's get into the much more functional and interesting things, and that's going to be when you can make reinforced iron. If you take an iron ingot plus one of these reinforced stones, you can make a reinforced iron ingot, which can be used to make many, many things in the future. To start with, a torch plus reinforced iron ingot in the same calculator will make you a lantern. And a lantern, let me grab one of these here, uh, is really cool. It's just like a torch, just a different way of looking, pretty cool. But there are multiple types of lanterns. This one is just a standard aesthetic one. It's not going to give you anything beneficial except for a, a regular light area effect. Now, if you take two lanterns together, you'll get a gas lantern, which will be beneficial later on when you create a greenhouse. In the meantime, though, just know that it is similar to a regular lantern, except for the fact that it requires fuel. So if I put some coal in here, put that in, you'll see that it lights up and starts giving off the particle effects. It's a similar texture to the other one, but not quite the same, so you can tell the difference on these two. Plus, if you right-click on it, you get this uh, interface. If you right-click on this one, you, you, you don't get anything there. 
Now what else can you do with this reinforced iron? You guessed it, you can make reinforced iron tools. These aren't really that much better, but in durability, once again, 400 for the uh, reinforced iron tools and weapons, and your regular iron ones is going to be 250. But I recommend actually skipping over them. Just make yourself an iron pick or a reinforced iron pickaxe and move on to something a little bit bigger and better later on, which I will cover shortly. But first, let's get into a little bit more advancement. Follow this path over here, and I've got a whole bunch of well, machines, for lack of a better term. Uh, it's not all just about using your calculator for A plus B equals whatever. In this case, you can make yourself some other items. To start with, you're going to want to make yourself a power cube, which is just a furnace inside a crafting furnace, basically. So you've got eight cobblestone around. A furnace will make you a power cube. Very cool, very useful. I'll place one down here so you can see if I right-click on it. It will actually give you this little UI, and it says that you can add in some kind of power in here. Uh, it tells you how much it can transmit at a time, which is 200 uh, RF per tick. Max output, none, because this is a basic one. This is not an advanced one, so it's not really going to output anything except for items that you put inside, which can be useful for things like you know, modules or other calculators that may require energy like a crafting calculator, which, by the way, crafting calculators require energy to craft with. They don't just hold stuff, they also require power. If you want to craft things or if you want to use your calculator, you're probably going to want to actually use this to generate some. So let me grab a way of generating power early game. That's going to be a hand-cranked generator, which is simply made with uh, six sticks, a power cube, and a couple of oak wood planks will make you one of those. But you will need a hand crank as well, which is going to be kind of like this little Z-shaped pattern of sticks will get you a crank handle. Now I've got one of these. I'll just put it right next to it, and it should directly connect to it. Now if I right-click on here, you'll see how much it generates. First, let me show you how much it generates by itself. If I just uh, whoops, right-click the handle once, you can see in here it generated 72. There we go, 144, and you can see it's generating power right there. So if I do this while it's connected to a power cube, the power cube will accept power, but it won't push any out. So therefore, 72, 144, and so on. And you can just keep right-clicking this if you want. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'll put the handle away so you can see my hand actually doing this. And it'll keep going around, keep generating power, and you can see that the power meter is just starting to get up there. Now you could feasibly plop in a bunch of other materials. Uh, let's drop in some coal, or we could put in some redstone. I'll grab a bunch of those, and that could definitely get you a big boost on power, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Typically, early game, you just need this little hand crank. It's the cheapest material. It's renewable. It just takes a little bit of time for you to click it a few times. And what can you do? You put your, your uh, calculator in here, and you can see it is currently storing energy. There we go. Your regular calculator stores a thousand. Your crafting calculator is going to store more than that. Now, you can mine your power cube if you notice on the top left there. And yes, I am using the one probe is the uh, mod that I'm using that generates that little image up there that says power cube calculator no tool. Uh, and that is telling me that I could break this power cube with my hand. I'm in creative, so if I try this right now, I'm just going to destroy it, so I'm not going to bother. But you get the idea that this is how this works. It's basically just for inserting something to be recharged. It is not intended for generating power to neighboring or connecting units. All right, next up, we've got this here. It is a sickle and a wrench. Now, a wrench is just a regular reinforced pickaxe and sword, which is the stone tool versions, reinforced stone tool versions. Uh, and a sickle is a stone reinforced stone axe and a reinforced stone shovel together in your regular calculator. We'll make your sickle and wrench. A wrench is going to be much more useful at this point. A sickle will be useful potentially later on. A wrench will allow you to just shift, right click, and you can pick up the block. And there we go. You can see stored energy, 39. Pretty cool. And of course, I'm in creative, so it created a duplicate. But there, you get the idea. It will allow you to do so and pick up certain items from the calculator mod really quick and easy without having to try and mine them. Now over here, we have the reinforced furnace, which can be useful, but also cannot be early on. It all depends. You take a furnace, surround it with a bunch of reinforced stone, and you'll get a reinforced furnace. Now a reinforced furnace 
uh, is is a little bit finicky. Right here you can see it has zero RF. Well, let's put in a piece of coal, and just a single one. And I will also get myself, oh look, I've got a furnace already. So let's get uh, two pieces of coal so that we can compare. Now I'm going to put one piece in here, 500 RF, right? That's not bad. That's that's pretty good. Well, let me take this furnace, put this over here, and I'll put that there. Then we can do some potatoes. And this is where you'll see uh, the difference. Now I'm going to toss in a half stack potatoes, toss in a half stack potatoes. You can see that this is currently devouring your RF power just to try and cook one item. It, it actually, yeah, it, 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 made one baked potato folks and you already know vanilla logic it's going to make eight baked potatoes from that one piece of coal there so to start with it's not as efficient as one might think unless you can have it constantly being fed with different materials uh, so you could be feeding this or you could be piping in some kind of rf and by RF, I don't mean reinforced furnace, I mean power, uh, which is generated here. So just keep that in mind that this is a useful tool, just not necessarily yet, because you can also add in circuits to it to enhance it further, similar to how the mod mechanism works with a lot of its machines. Now what else do we have? We have a stone separator, which uh, may look similar here. There we go. You can see the difference here. Let me put one over here. We'll put it right next to these other machines. And the stone separator is made with six reinforced stone, two power cubes, which are pretty darn cheap, and one reinforced iron ingot. And with this, you have a stone separator. Stone separator has a lot of uses. It has a lot of uses. But if I right click on it, you'll see it has this weird UI. Of course, as before, you can feed it uh, redstone, uh, you know, just toss a bunch in here, or you can feed it uh, coal or other uh, fossil fuels of sorts, and it will take items in here, which this is not the item that it will use, but you can take items in there, and it will potentially give you two different outputs. So for instance, if I take a piece of iron ore, toss that in there, it will take some time, but it will eventually, after using a bunch of power, give you some kind of output like that. We have four reinforced iron ingots and two small stones. Four reinforced ingots. Instead of taking one ingot with your calculator, your not crafting calculator, your regular calculator, one piece of iron plus uh, one reinforced stone would get you one reinforced iron ingot before. Whereas with this, if you look, one iron ore got you four of those ingots plus two small stones. So this can be really, really beneficial for uh, trying to save yourself some materials early on. So I do recommend that you get yourself a stone separator as soon as possible, get some power into that thing and use it. There's a lot of uses for it, and I'm going to go into that part next, which is to start. You can put in an oak piece of oak wood. You get your four oak planks and two extra sticks. Uh, iron ore, you get, as I showed before, four reinforced iron and two small stone. Gold ore, you get four enriched gold ingots and two small stones. Very important. I'll cover those shortly. Lapis lazuli, you can take a block and you'll get one large amethyst and an amethyst shard, or a lapis lazuli will get you one baby amethyst here instead of a large one and an amethyst shard. I recommend you use the lapis lazuli and just take longer so you can get more of these shards because you're going to need the shards and the amethyst later on. And you can take nine amethysts and make a large amethyst, just like you would with lapis making a lapis lazuli block. Now, what do you do with those amethysts? Well, you make yourself amethyst trees, and there's good reason for that too. That's going to be so you can make yourself a large amethyst. Oak sapling will make you an amethyst sapling. Plant one of those things down, bone meal it, and you get something that looks similar to this, except it won't have all these little gems in the leaves. It may take a little bit longer. Allow me to actually grab one, grab a little bone meal, and there you go. You can see that the leaves are just purple, whereas these ones here are actually gemmed. Over time, those leaves will start generating the gems on them as well, and you can harvest those in some ways. You might be able to use that sickle if possible. Right now, I'm currently experiencing a glitch that is not allowing me to do so, but there's a much more reliable way to do so, and that is with a stone assimilator, but I'll cover that shortly. I should also mention that the amethyst tree, instead of just taking a large amethyst and an oak sapling every single time to make that sapling, you can also harvest one piece of wood 
one of the leaves with a pair of shears and combine them together in your calculator. It will then create yourself another sapling. So you can just grab a, a few of these, keep a few extra pieces, and you can make yourself a sapling. Or a piece of wood and a baby amethyst, or just two pieces of wood will get you a sapling. All of these in your calculator. Don't forget to grab some bone meal so you can just grow this thing up quickly. Now, of course, your amethyst wood will make planks, stairs, and fences, all in that pretty purple flavor. Now, what else can I do here? I can make a stone assimilator. Stone assimilator. You'll have to take a sickle, stone separator, three reinforced stone in a crafting grid, and make yourself that stone assimilator. What does it do? This thing here is going to be fantastic in the future. You put it on a tree like this, and you'll see it has hunger points displayed. Health points, zero. This is very important. Over time, this is going to start harvesting all these little gemmed berries in the tree so that you can later on eat them with a hunger module, which will be covered in the future, but just know that that's what this is good for at this point. I put the hunger module in here, it stores them, and you can use those hunger points to feed yourself at a future time just by, well, taking them here and shift right clicking and you get yourself your hunger point, your uh, hunger refilled. It's really, really cool, really beneficial. You can just leave it in there for now on your first few trees and it will over time just harvest those automatically for you. But like I said, that's going to be once you get into the scientific calculator stage. So just know that at this point, it's probably best to set this up and have it start storing as much hunger points as possible so that you can use them later on. Now, let's go back over here to where I was before which is enriched gold. Enriched gold is made with a gold ingot and redstone in your calculator will get you enriched gold, kind of like this dust here. And you'll want to turn it into ingots by smelting it in a furnace. Uh, this case, you place a furnace down, you put the enriched gold in the furnace and you cook it and you'll get yourself enriched gold ingots. It's not crafted in your calculator. And of course you'll get the really, really good tools, in my opinion at least. And that's the enriched gold ones. The reason for this, these tools, uh, specifically the gold pickaxe, will mine obsidian and diamonds. Not a problem. Also, the sword is not that good. It's really bad. The, 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 these are not good for offense whatsoever, but they're really good, useful tools. So I don't recommend you make yourself the sword, just things like the shovel and the pick, perhaps even the hoe or the axe, because their durability is 1,000. These are really, really good, and I recommend that you check those out. Otherwise, you can always stick with your, uh, you know, iron sword or reinforced iron sword and so on. Uh, with those, you can then make yourself a basic greenhouse. This is where things get really, really cool, as if they weren't already. And that is going to be four reinforced stone, a reinforced iron block, plus four enriched gold ingots. Now, this, a basic greenhouse, is pretty darn neat. You're going to need, in order to use this, a lot of materials. And I'll, I'll show you how this works. A basic greenhouse takes up a five by five area of dirt, more or less. Now I have a stone here just to represent where uh, the base greenhouse is going to be placed. You place it here, and in the opposite side, right here, is going to be a door. So just keep that in mind. You're building a structure automatically. It's really, really cool. I'm going to place this chest in front of that greenhouse. It's a bit confusing. You might think, well, why am I doing that? Because that's going to be the uh, stuff that's going to be kicked out. You don't have to do that straight away but it's going to be useful. I'm going to take all these items here and you will see why all this stuff can come together to create a really wonderful contraption. So if I right click on the base greenhouse, you see just behind the, the, the chest here, you can see it has this interface and this is like a play or pause button in these machines in the top corner. You've got your option to build, to rebuild, and to demolish. Uh, it's pretty darn cool. So you take what it needs, which is going to be a whole bunch of stuff. You can create this with multiple different kinds of woods, glass, stairs, or wood planks as you desire. Uh, I'm going to use acacia, uh, smoky gray glass. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to toss a bunch in here. If you don't know how much it needs, it will tell you. So to find out how much it needs, have an open hand, shift, right click, and it says first, not enough energy. So of course you'll have to power it, uh, whether it be by hand, which uh, you could use your hand crank next to this thing. I, I, I don't recommend you do that. Uh, with some coal uh, or 
you know, you see how much a stack is giving this thing right now? Not very much. Uh, or perhaps uh, redstone. Let's grab a stack of redstone, which is going to give it more power, but you can see how quickly it chunks through it. Not to worry, I'll show you how you can better do this in the future. But for the moment, I'm just going to toss in a whole bunch of uh, other redstone. And you can let this thing power up. You can just plug it in with some uh, other redstone or uh, RF energy production if you so desire from other mods. But for now, I'm just showing you how this thing works. I'll show you more about power generation for it in a moment. So put all these things in here and we'll see. Actually, I'm going to take these back out. Uh, let's take these out and shift right click and it says 18 logs, 56 stairs, 30 planks and 14 glass. Well, I'm just going to put a whole stack of each in there and it'll still be just fine. Let's click build and it automatically will build this little house for you. A greenhouse, in fact. And it then also tills the land and puts a little water pool in the center. <laughs> it's really, really good. Now let's go finish this off ourselves. It will not have an, uh, a door on it. There are also multiple versions of this. This is the basic greenhouse. There's an advanced and a flawless version. But for now, there we go. You don't have to have a door. It's just basically to keep mobs out or something of that nature. You can take the seeds and hand plant them of what you would like to grow in there. But you can also just right click and you can have them fed in to this and it will automatically plant them for you, which is really, really good. On top of that, I can then take my scarecrow and right click next to that seed that's already in the ground. Let's close that door. And you can see here, if I right click now, you've probably been wondering why, what's with the carbon dioxide and the oxygen over here. This is basically letting you know that you have not a very good atmosphere for your plants to grow in. You need to have it carbon dioxide rich instead of oxygen. So in order to do that, this is where your gas lanterns come in. Now you can spam them in there if you like, but you don't have to. It's just going to speed up how quickly uh, things will, uh, well, get carbon dioxide-ish. So there we go. I'm just, I've got way more. I've got, I'm using like blocks right now. I'm just going to put a couple in here for now and that you only need a little bit. They last a very long time, even on one piece of coal. So that's going to last forever and a day. But you can see here the percentage of, of carbon dioxide is going up. The oxygen level is dropping. So therefore it's going to make a carbon dioxide rich environment for your plants to grow faster in. And they'll start pumping out the uh, results shortly. Now, this is why you've got a chest in front. You don't have to have this one down here, just in front of your basic greenhouse, because otherwise it's just going to spit things out into the world. With a chest here, it will actually gra uh, grab items out of it. Now, I've got broccoli in here already, uh, and you can then just cook those up and so on as you would like. It, it's really cool. It's a little automated way of having a little greenhouse. You just need to, on occasion, Make sure that you've got fuel for these things at the moment, and it's it's really, really nice. Now, let's get into a little bit of um, how better to power this. And you might think, okay, the, this thing here, it, it does use power as it goes as well. You can see 332, 3.2 RF, and there it goes, 333 RF. eventually it's going to start using more and more power. Uh, well, not more and more, but it, it will use power over time. So you are going to need to power it. How better to empower it than with some enriched coal? Enriched coal in your calculator is redstone plus coal will get you enriched coal, which is a burn time of 5,000 compared to, I believe it's 1,600 for coal, which uh, will make you eight baked potatoes on one smelting. Uh, Enriched coal will make you 25 baked potatoes at one smelting. So it is going to be much better than that. And it will in fact be better than if you put coal and redstone in alone. So therefore, this is a really good source of getting fuel into those things. And they will also help your little, uh, you know, gas lanterns burn much longer, which by the way, the UI on here amount burnt one, that's 1%. Once it gets up to 100, that's basically it using up one piece of whatever is in there. So that's going to be burning for a very long time. And then last but not least, how to get into the next age. And that is the scientific calculator. That's going to be four enriched gold ingots, two reinforced stone, two calculator assemblies, and a calculator screen. 
We'll get you a scientific calculator, which is even more confusing. Just kidding. It, it's, it's going to be able to make even more things for you that will help you advance even further. So uh, I guess that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit by bit on the calculator mod. If so, don't be afraid to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this content as well. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.